Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and I am here today to help you help yourself experience the joy and wonder of self-publishing on the internet. In our previous lesson, we worked together to enthusiastically create a bad web page, as that's the first step to doing anything well, as long as that anything is making a web page. But in this lesson, I'll be teaching you how to self-publish that web page by copying it from your computer to a web server. This might sound intimidating, but it's basically dragging and dropping a file. If you know how to upload a file to the internet, you've done this before, even if you haven't done it in this specific way. So I guess what you gotta ask is, what is a web server? Where do I put the file? So without getting too technical, a web server is basically somebody else's computer, but in a data center. And you might say, ah, Joe, I thought I was gonna be self-publishing this. Why can't I just have people load that file up on my computer? Here's the thing. You could, in theory, have people walk through your living room and click on your computer and open up that file the same way we did in lesson one. But really, you wanna be able to put that file somewhere that people can access it 24 hours a day from the comfort of their own homes. If you are particularly technically minded and don't mind spending a little bit of extra money, in the long term, you can certainly buy your own servers. But when you're starting out, the easiest thing is just to lease web hosting from a hosting provider. For the purposes of this episode, this lesson was sponsored by Name Hero, and I'm gonna be showing clips of me manipulating files and moving things around in the Name Hero interface. If you go to namehero.com slash Joe, that is our affiliate link. Thank you to them for sponsoring. And now I know I've already lost some of you here because you're like, wait, 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 wait. Web hosting, leasing a server, this costs money? It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. And in some cases, it may be free. Some university students may have access to free web hosting through their institution. Like my alma mater's my.vanderbilt.edu program. So if you're a student, check if your university offers to host websites for you. Now, obviously, Vanderbilt students aren't really getting free hosting. They're just paying for it out of their $65,000 a year annual tuition. But don't worry, there's plenty of ways to buy web hosting directly without bundling in a four-year degree from a private university. For example, our sponsor, Name Hero, they have a few different tiers of hosting they offer. For the purposes of this lesson, I'll be using the Turbo Cloud tier they provided me to use for this course as part of the sponsorship. That would be about $6 a month if you bought a few months up front. Now, they do have cheaper tiers as well, starting at $2.24 a month. So this can be accessible to a lot of folks. We'll go through the different options and why to choose what later in this lesson. Right now, I just wanna show you how easy it is to drag and drop a file to upload it to the internet so other people can look at it. You wanna be self-published. Let's get there now. Publishing. Uploading a file from your computer to someone else's computer. That server, that someone else's computer, it's very similar to yours. It's just far away. And it has, like your computer, a directory structure. You know, you know the difference between your downloads folder and your documents folder, your movies, your music, that sort of thing. That's all there. Except for the server, it might have different folders for like logs, which would be records of people who access the site, or another folder for public HTML, which would be all the files that are gonna go out to anybody who asks for them, right? So what we need to do today is we need to log in to your web host's file manager. They might call it something different, especially if you're speaking a different language, but the whole thing about web hosting is in order for them to host your files, they need to provide you with a way to put your files on their computer. And I'm gonna level with you. There are many ways that you could do this, okay? SFTP has been around for a long time. It's a huge rabbit hole. Oh, it would have been a great gag if I snapped this in half to make rabbit ears, but this is an actual level and I will get in trouble. So we're not gonna do that. Can't have level fluid popping everywhere. Also, it's chroma green, so it wouldn't even look great. I would just be wet and the level would be broken. But core concept, your web host's job is to hold on to files that you send them. 
and they generally want to make it easy for you to do that. So we're gonna avoid the rabbit hole of which SFTP client is best for secure file transfer protocoling. We're just gonna stick with whatever your web host gives you for right now, because that's the easiest thing. Now, a lot of web hosts use a piece of software called cPanel, and if you can find that or its equivalent in your hosting site, and then find the file manager, you'll see a list of directories that you have access to on your server. Chances are you'll see one for logs, you might see one for email. The one you care about is probably something like www or public HTML or htdocs. That's hypertext docs. You know, because ships pull up to the docs and they take your hypertext out to the world. So core concept. What you want to do is you want to find that folder and then you want to upload only your bad web page.html file. Don't put anything that you don't want publicly available on the internet in this folder. This is the equivalent of you printing out whatever that is and then mailing it to the neighborhood, possibly. You, you really want to be very aware of what you put on your web hosting, okay? And so, core concept. If we upload badwebpage.html to the correct folder, then when we visit your domain name slash badwebpage.html, we should see your web page. And not only from the computer you uploaded it from, but from any computer, basically anywhere in the world. Congratulations, you're published. Now, you might not be at the top of the New York Times bestseller list, because they don't really track self-hosted web pages. But you know what? You're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you. And I'm proud of you. So, you may notice that I instructed you to include the file name after your domain name. And that's because when we access our domain name or a subdirectory on that domain name without requesting a specific file name, the server tries to serve a default file which on most web hosting configurations is either index.html or index.php. Let's create a local copy of our bad web page and name it index.html. Then we can upload that to the same folder using the same process. And if you now try to access your domain name directly, you should see your bad web page load as the homepage for your new site. Now that you've seen that this is easy enough, anyone can do it. I promised I'd come back around to picking a host and plan. I'm gonna be talking about a few options offered by our sponsor, Name Hero, but you could apply this analysis to other hosts too as needed. Picking a hosting plan. I wish I had a pickaxe, cause then I would. It's probably too late to fashion a pickaxe out of things in the room. If you already have a domain name or are comfortable buying one elsewhere and pointing it to your web host, you might be able to just start off with the cheapest entry-level hosting plan here. It does streamline things if you get a plan with a domain name included, like this one, Turbo Cloud, which is what I'm using, which also allows you to host more than one site. Why would you want to host more than one site? Well, it can be handy for separating your interests into multiple sites. Like, I really like video games, but I also really like writing poetry. In my case, because I'm a weirdo, Having all of that on joehills.net makes sense, but in some cases, people need a clearer like, delineation between their hobbies and their professions. And so, you know, you might wanna have a site for your restaurant, but also a site for your fishing. Just an option you have. Also, sometimes you wanna have an opportunity for your kids to learn to code, but not necessarily self-publish. You might wanna be the editor-in-chief of their online experience. And so if you've got a separate domain name that they can send you files to upload to, then, you know, that could be something fun as a family activity. It's educational, but you're not necessarily filling your professional website or your restaurant's website with random stuff that your kids want to show the aunts and uncles. Just an option. Anyway, you can always upgrade your plan later, but a lot of web hosts offer their best deals for introductory rates uh, for new customers, that sort of thing. So maybe think about what you might need and then try to plan around that. 
you could possibly save money if you're likely to upgrade your plan in a few months anyway, just get in that plan now. So I'll let you do the math. Inventing a domain name. Yeah. So what about creating your domain name? You know yourself and what you want to share with the world better than I do. But try to think of something that might look good on a printed card or flyer and is easy enough to speak aloud and spell. If you're planning any sort of communication about your site with others, I'd also recommend considering something that you wouldn't mind also using in an email address. For example, because I own joehills.net for my website, I can link that domain to an email provider and then create username at joehills.net email accounts for myself and folks working for me. If you're making a website for a project you want people to contact you about, keep how it would sound in an email address in mind while choosing a domain name. Thank you so much for joining me for my second lesson in the Joe Hill Says You Can Code series. In our next lesson, we'll explore making the jump from simple web page to simple website. All those folders and subdirectories we talked about, you can fill them with images, with HTML snippets, all sorts of things. And we're gonna show you how to actually take what you've got and make it something that people can click around and actually really you know, dig into. I'm really excited about that. I'm also excited that this lesson was sponsored by Name Hero. If you need hosting or a domain name, please consider using my affiliate link at namehero.com slash Joe. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.